I'm Mitch Gallagher. Welcome to the Sweetwater Minute. This time out, we have a very special guest joining us. Robbie Krieger is here. Robbie, hey. thanks for being here. We really appreciate you coming in. Yeah. You were in uh, talking to the sales engineers? Yeah, I had a nice meeting with the uh, staff there. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, a lot of cool people that work here. You even broke out uh, some of the famous songs and, uh, and showed a little bit of the, uh, yeah. the technique there. Yeah, we got a new uh, Robbie Krieger model coming out here, so. Yeah, let's, uh, let's talk about that. So this is a new, uh, new Les Paul. Right, it's a new old one. A new old one, right? Fifty-four. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's exactly like my old fifty-four that I bought back in the sixties, mm -hmm. and I've had ever since. And uh, I actually used it most on most of the doors uh, slide songs. Okay, so predominantly for the slide parts. Yeah. So you've got a P ninety and you've got a mini humbucker in the neck. Uh, how did right. you decide to make that change? Um, the uh, the one that was up here didn't work, so I, just, <laughs> I decided to put, somebody told me, hey, Seymour Duncan makes these new uh, pickups, you know, that are, that are pretty good, you know. Right. And uh, we stuck it in there and it worked. It worked great for you? Yeah. And the guitar also has an ebony fingerboard. It sure does, yeah. It's not, you know, it's pretty hard to get ebony nowadays, but, but they saved this ebony uh, over at Gibson for uh, for this guitar. For a special occasion. Really yeah. was made me a happy camper. Yeah, right, right. The guitar is gorgeous. It's got all the checking and the, yeah, uh, yeah. all the the road miles on it. Yeah, they did a great job and the uh, I love the binding. It just it looks exactly like the original. Yeah. You yellowed it perfectly. Right, right. And you've all, pretty much always been a Gibson guy. Yeah, exactly. Played a lot of SGs. Uh, that's what I started with and and uh, you know, for uh, after the Doors were over, I started playing more jazz fusion kind of stuff. So I was, I went to 355s for a while. Mm -hmm. But then uh, about 15 years ago, I, I found an SG that I really liked, and uh, a 67. Okay. And uh, Gibson made a, a a Robbie Krieger model out of that a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd pretty much play that SG. What was it that attracted you to the SG? Ah, uh, just the way it looks, man. It, I don't know what it is about it. It just uh, seems it's a psychedelic looking guitar, right? And and it sounds great too. And it's it's you know got that double cutaway. It's easy to play up high. Mm -hmm. A lot of good things about it. Right. So you, your uh, guitar style is very interesting. You started out as a more classical flamenco and kind of got into the electric stuff later. Right. Exactly. Uh, started playing flamenco when I was uh, maybe. 15 or 16 and um, you know I took uh, a lot of lessons and I was pretty serious about it mm -hmm. um, and then uh, I, I also played you know folk music and stuff uh, uh, acoustic guitar I, you know I didn't really I wasn't really thinking about like uh, rock and roll right even though I liked rock and roll and then one day I saw Chuck Berry play and this was like 64 when and Johnny Johnson was playing and uh, it was just amazing, uh, uh, and the next day I went and traded my uh, uh, acoustic for uh, for an SG. And that was it. That was it. That was it. And you hadn't been playing all that long, electric-wise, when you joined the Doors. Right. It was only a couple of years that I'd been playing uh, electric guitar. Mm -hmm. um, it was, uh, which might have been a good thing because it, it made me so very open to, you know. To playing stuff that uh, other guys didn't play a lot, and uh, for, for it was good for songwriting too. I think because uh, you know even a minor A chord was exciting to me at that point. Right, right, brand new. Yeah, right. That's that's interesting because you've you've brought together so many different styles. You're also a fan of jazz and John Coltrane and people like that, and play finger style. 
So it kind of, you were kind of the progenitor of that whole psychedelic bringing a lot of things together. The, the, the point of all this is that my understanding is that you were never trying to emulate people. You're always trying to do your own thing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, I mean, the truth was I wasn't really good enough to emulate anybody. <laughs> so, I, I, you know, I just tried to do my own thing. And, um, you know, I, I, I never used a pick in those days, mm -hmm. uh, which I think made me kind of different. Uh, uh, but um, it was uh, probably, you know, like I said, it was probably a good thing that I that I wasn't trying to copy other people. I mean, you got to try to copy guys uh, a little bit, to, you know, when you're starting. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I don't think it's a good idea to, to try to really, you know, do a, you know, total tribute to somebody unless that's what you want to do. But if you want to do your own thing, uh, it's better to, you know, try to develop your own style. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And you kind of set up some of the music to allow you to do that. I, I know you were a fan of the modal uh, improvising that was going on in the 60s, and you had some of those kind of chord progressions in the music as well. Can you talk about what attracted you to that and what that let you do as a guitar player? Um, well, I was really into Indian music, you know. Uh, I discovered uh, Ravi Shankar, you know, uh, uh, when I was maybe 16. And um, up until then, it, you know, it was more flamenco and stuff, but uh, I, I really, I was really uh, fascinated by just how they just stay on the one chord, they have that tambora going, you know, mm -hmm. and they just can go anywhere off of that, you know. And so that's kind of what we tried to do with the end. Uh, uh, I tuned down to drop D tuning and, and um, just tried to uh, try to emulate some of the Indian scales. Right. And, uh, you know, the song, the end, uh, actually was just a little three minute song when it started, but then as we played it in person, it kind of grew and kept getting longer and more, you know, instrumental and and uh, the cool poet, poetic imagery too. Right, right. Sort of the uh, the beginning of the whole jam band thing that, yeah, was, that was going on. Yeah, that's another there. Doors first. Yeah, there you jam go. Jam band, yeah. uh, punk. You know, right. uh, we started it all. Right, right. But you're continuing that because you're going to be at Bonnaroo doing the super jam with Skrillex. That's right. right. That's Can you tell right, us about yeah. that? Well, I don't know much about it. I'm just going, and uh, I think some uh, one of the Marley kids is going to play. So uh, I guess we're going to do some door songs and some reggae, and who knows what. Wow. Yeah. Oh, gonna that's going to be fun. Yeah. That's going to be fun. So one of your current projects is uh, the Jam Kitchen. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Um, yeah, Robbie Krieger's Jam Kitchen is uh, uh, a thing I started with uh, a couple of guys from Frank Zappa's band. Uh, Arthur Barrow, who's the bass player that played uh, on Joe's Garage and a couple of those albums, and Tommy Mars, who's an amazing keyboard player. And um, this next uh, shows we're doing uh, around, not here, but Chicago area, mm -hmm. uh, we got Chad Wackerman also, so that's like three Zappa guys. Right. And, <laughs> and uh, Larry, uh, Larry Klimas is a horn player. Mm -hmm. So we do uh, kind of our own uh, jazz compositions, jam, kind of a jam feel. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do some door stuff, uh, a little different than the doors, but uh, it's fun. A new take on it. Yeah. Right. So is it material? Your, your last album was Singularity, right. correct? Which yeah. was Grammy nominated? Mm -hmm. Congratulations, by the way. Uh, are you doing material from that? Is that the direction that you're taking with this project? Yeah, there's some, some from that and some new stuff that, mm -hmm. that's going to be on a new record. And is the, uh, the instrumental thrust more what you're interested in these days? Yeah, exactly. Um, it's, uh, well, you don't have to see it. Yeah, <laughs> I look forward to it. I think it'll be, I think it'll be great. It'll yeah, be great. Yeah. Well, we're playing uh, Chicago, uh, Toledo. Um, uh, I think we're doing Atlantic City. And uh, so look on the website, Robbie Krieger, Jam Kitchen. Nice. Will do. So, Robbie, I understand that you're actually a Sweetwater customer and that you have a pretty good relationship yeah, with your uh, sales engineer here. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually uh, I, I started uh, with Sweetwater years ago. Kenny Burgle, I don't know whether he called me. I don't remember how it happened, but I started buying stuff from, from this place called Sweetwater. And, um, and I, start, I got to know Kenny Burgle. 
and uh, he was I must have been one of the first guys here. Mm -hmm. He was an early sales engineer, right? Yeah, and and we became buddies, and he actually came out to my house, and we jammed one time. How about that? Yeah, How yeah. That? But then I kind of lost track of him uh, over the years, and uh, I just met him again today. It was great to see him. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you being a customer. Yeah, man. I've been a customer since the beginning. Robbie, thanks so much for coming in today. It's been a real pleasure to have right, you here. Man. Pleasure to meet you. you too. Thanks for uh, for uh, sharing the new. This is a prototype of the uh, yeah. This the upcoming is the uh, first uh, the first uh, first one they made. So see, proto number one. That's yeah, what proto it says. number one. Yeah, yeah, nice. Love it. The inaugural unit. Yeah. Right <laughs> well, thanks again. We really right. appreciate you being here. Sure. I'm Mitch Gallagher. Thanks for joining me for the Sweetwater Minute. Mm -hmm.